In my persistent search for a truly all-in-one productivity app, I'd often become infatuated with shiny new releases, only to find them overly complex or poorly designed in practice. And that changed in 2018 when I discovered Notion. It perfectly balanced capability and simplicity in an interface that valued form as much as function. So I was enchanted, and like a true technophile, I made a website about it. Three years later, that website is alive and stronger than ever. You can access it at notion.vip. And Notion has become the operating system of my business and my life. I use it to manage projects, finances, relationships, events, hobbies, media, travel, philanthropy, everything. And I'm able to do that because Notion integrates the essential features of other productivity apps to form a widely versatile tool where the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. It's a foundation on which users can craft a system for their unique needs, drawing elements of Airtable, Excel, Google Docs, Trello, Asana, Evernote, Todoist, and many other popular apps within the productivity space. So last year when COVID drove me out of New York and back home to North Carolina, I became a homeowner for the first time, and Notion supported every step of that process, from finances and legalities to furnishing and repairs. And my decorator was astonished by the rich document I compiled for her using all of those features of Notion. And I'm not alone in my deep dive into Notion. Teams across the globe are flocking to the platform as they pivot to remote collaboration, match, Headspace, Typeform, Loom, and Figma are some of the recognizable brands among them. And you can explore their experiences at notion.so slash customers. So for me, Notion is more than the engine of my business. It is my business. I now spend the bulk of my days consulting users, evolving my bulletproof framework, and working directly with Notion on a variety of special projects, including the Certified Consultant Program, and a new training curriculum for their global support team. And all of that work informs these eight strategies that will help you make the most of Notion, whether you're already all in like I am, or you're just wetting your toes. And you'll find these strategies published in a guest post on the Zapier blog, and there's a link to that post within the YouTube video description. Most users quickly grasp the fundamentals, but you should dedicate time to learning the essential elements of Notion. And in the simplest terms, Notion comprises workspaces, pages, and blocks. You can think of them hierarchically where workspaces contain pages and pages contain blocks. So workspaces are pretty comprehensive. They typically serve a full organization, like a Slack workspace. Many Notion users have a workspace at work, a personal workspace, and sometimes a third workspace for a collaborative hobby or philanthropic initiative. And then pages are documents within Notion workspaces. They're composed with blocks, and those blocks can include subpages. Like a traditional folder structure, these nested pages form a hierarchy that organizes the workspace. But unlike traditional folders, Notion pages are interlinked which creates a web-like navigation structure similar to Wikipedia. And then blocks for the various types of content within pages. Every paragraph, heading, and list item is a block. You can choose from more than 50 blocks for your pages, including embedded multimedia and third-party services. So in that document for my decorator, the workspace is Nut Labs, the page is Williams Home Decor, and the blocks are the headings, lists, photos, databases, and other contents within the page. Other top-level pages are visible within the sidebar. And then we have databases. Databases are another essential piece of the Notion puzzle. They can exist as blocks within pages, and they can also be opened as their own pages. Think of databases as collections of items with common properties. Viewed as a table, the items are rows and the properties are columns. A database of NBA players might include properties for each player's name, team, number, position, height, college, birthday, and more. Like blocks, database properties come in various formats such as text, numbers, dates, and dropdowns. And Notion allows you to view databases in multiple configurations. Tables are best for bulk editing and learning the relationship between 
properties, and entries of the database, but you'll eventually use Kanban boards, lists, calendars, timelines, and galleries. And here you can see the NBA players displayed as a gallery. So to ensure a sound understanding of the fundamentals, spend some time with Notion's help and support page, as well as their YouTube channel. So our next strategy is to use keyboard shortcuts. By using hotkeys for common actions, you'll feel like a true Notion wizard as you quickly compose your pages and move about your workspace. So make a habit of using them and then muscle memory will soon take over. And here are 10 that I use often. If you type a pound symbol and then a space, that's going to create a heading one. Two pound symbols and a space will create a heading two. And then three will create a heading three. You can start a bullet list by typing a dash and then a space. And then you can continue that list, of course, by using the return or the enter key. And then somewhat similarly, you can start a to-do list with an open and closed bracket and then continue that with enter or return as you create your to-dos. You can create a toggle using the greater than character and then a space, and you can open that toggle by holding command or control and hitting return or enter, and then you can enter your contents. And for any block that you're editing, you can hold command or control and slash to bring up the block menu. So if we have a heading one, and this could be just a standard text paragraph as well. But if you hold Command or Control and hit the slash key, you have your full block menu, which you can then search. So if we want to add a background to our heading one, we can just type the color and the word background. Or we could just type background if we wanted to, to have all of our background color options. And then navigate down to it, choose it, all by keyboard. So with the at symbol, you can mention pages, people, and other contents of your workspace. You can also enter dates, which is going to create a date in a friendly format. So if we type at and next Saturday, that's going to create a dynamic date. And as we approach that day, the way that it is phrased is going to change over time and it's also a link so we can click on that date to pick a new one to add a reminder to specify times and to add an end date and if we type remind before the date then we're going to get a reminder and you can specify the details of the reminder within the menu here and Related to that, if we choose remind and a date, and then we mention a person, that person is going to receive the reminder in addition to us. So somewhat like the at mention, our link to page shortcut allows us to link to a page or create a new page and that new page can either be a sub page of our current page or we can specify another page in which to add it but if we choose a page to reference then we're gonna see its icon we're gonna see its title and that will all re remain dynamic so if you update that page it will be reflected in all references and then if you are within any sort of text block and you highlight a segment of text and hold command or control and shift and M, you can add a comment all by keyboard. And then our last two here just relate to the navigation of your workspace. If you hold command or control and P, that's going to bring up your quick bind menu, which you can then type to search the contents of your workspace. And then by holding command or control and then either an open or a closed bracket, you can navigate forward and backward within your workspace. And then we want to remember not to reinvent the wheel. Your favorite apps were inspired by their predecessors, competing apps, and longstanding philosophies. And the same holds true for effective Notion workspaces. So, when planning your workspace, reference apps that specialize in particular functions. 
analyze how Asana models project management, how Slab organizes wikis, and how Pipedrive structures its CRM. And in doing so, try to recreate templates that serve your needs, not only Notion templates, but also templates from Coda, Airtable, and other tools. And don't copy those templates, really deconstruct and reconstruct them around real content. That's going to be the best way to learn Notion. In his project Notionize, the talented Ben Smith recreated 20 templates from five apps, and I've linked to that project from within the video description. Also consider traditional productivity philosophies and the Notion methodologies adapted from them. Get familiar with getting things done, Para, the Eisenhower Matrix, Agile, and the Bulletproof Method, all of which are linked within the Zapier post. And our fourth strategy is to share wisely. As a virtual collaboration tool, Notion offers a variety of sharing options, many of which are nuanced and unknown to everyday users. And too often that leads to moments of terror when users realize they've exposed more information than intended. So let's avoid those moments by reviewing the key concepts. At the top of every page is a share menu where you can specify who can access the page and their various privileges, and that includes databases and database items. And when you share a page, its subpages or its child pages automatically inherit the settings of their parent page, but you can reduce those inherited permissions from the share menu. And this holds true for databases. When you share a database, you share all of its items, but any item can be restricted. So this notes database, for example, is shared with everyone at Loggerhead Labs. But if we have a sensitive note within the database that we want to restrict, such as an exit interview, we can open up that item and within that items share menu, we can see that, that it's inheriting its access level from the broader notes database, but we can reduce that access level to no access, confirm, and that's going to give us a note at the top of the share menu indicating that access has been restricted. And we're also going to have this restricted button at the top of the page. So also within the share menu, you have the option to share to web, which makes the page accessible to anyone online with or without a Notion account. And when you do so, you can choose whether you'd like the page to appear within search engine results. Additional options require the visitor to have a Notion account, such as commenting, editing the document, or duplicating the document within their own workspace. And then you can copy that public link from this copy link button at the bottom of the share menu. So to share a page with specific users, you can enter their email address within the share menu, or if they're an existing guest or member of your workspace, you can choose from the list or type their name to search. And then you can indicate an access level and choose invite. And if they don't yet have a Notion account or receive an email from Notion that initiates the onboarding process. Can view access is just going to allow the users to view the document and then can comment adds the ability to leave comments within the document. Can edit allows the user to make edits to the content of the document and then full access adds the ability to control the share settings for the page. And when you share a page with specific users, those users become guests of your workspace. Guests are invited page by page. And on team level plans, including enterprise plans, workspaces have members. Within the share menu, you can choose everyone, and that's going to move the page into the workspace category of everyone's sidebar. And administrators can bundle members into groups, such as a marketing team. And this allows you to share pages with all users of the group as a single unit. And lastly, when you include a link to page block or a linked database within a page, viewers are going to need access to the original page or database, or else those references to them will appear as empty space. 
So those are the key concepts of sharing, but for the intricacies of sharing in Notion, take a look at the sharing and collaboration guides within Notion's help and support page. Next, I want to encourage you to learn advanced database features like formulas, relations, and rollups. Databases organize, visualize, contextualize, and summarize your information. They bolster project management, knowledge management, relationship management, and virtually every other organizational function. And Notion makes databases even more powerful by blending them with documents. Unlike other tools that use databases, every item of a Notion database is a fully functional document. It's as if you could open each row of a Google Sheet as a Google Doc. However, these advanced capabilities can intimidate many users, but learning databases is like learning a language. You can do a lot with the basics and you never really know everything. So as I mentioned, databases are collections of items with common properties, such as the names, numbers, and birthdays of NBA players. Those properties can be text, numbers, dates, and a variety of other data types. And more advanced properties like formulas, relations, and rollups retrieve information and perform calculations to automate workflows and reveal useful insights. So for example, a formula can calculate a player's age by finding the time between his birthday and the current date. So whether you're an Excel junkie or a complete stranger to databases, you'll learn them in quick increments through practical application. You can start with Notion's introductory guides and then move on to more advanced tutorials, a few of which are linked within the Zapier post. And then once you're comfortable with databases, you can move on to the sixth strategy, which is to choose databases over pages. So across my published resources, you'll see that I have a core recommendation for any Notion workspace. And in the simplest terms, that is to use databases for everything. Almost every page in your workspace should be an item of a master database, such as projects, people, or resources. Projects, tasks, meetings, events, notes, goals, wiki articles, they're all database items. And over time, these databases become quite expansive, but you only ever view them through contextual filters. And you'll link your databases through relation property. So for example, our database of NBA players is related to a database of NBA teams. And that allows us to map each player to his respective team. And with these connections in place, we can automatically filter databases within other databases. And therefore, each team can display only its players. In a projects database, each project can filter the tasks, resources, and meetings and events databases to show only the items related to that specific project. Now, I'd need my own category on the Zapier blog to demonstrate the full advantage and implementation of this database-centric approach. But the key benefits are that it keeps your information accurate and consistent. It minimizes redundancy and vulnerability to human error. It allows you to view your information in various formats and configurations. It automates contextual filters. It retains your ability to scale and migrate your content over time. It leverages Notion's most distinct advantage, which is that unique integration of databases and documents. And it structures your workspace for the API and thus Zapier. So my Bulletproof framework is built on this philosophy. And when you're ready, you can take a close look at the walkthrough of that Bulletproof workspace. And I'll link to that walkthrough from the description of this video. And the next strategy is to value aesthetics. So users love Notion in part because it gives equal weight to form and function. And you can uphold that principle by valuing the aesthetics as much as the architecture of your workspaces. So here are a few sort of sub strategies to help you do that. The first is to source inspiration. And by that, I mean, you want to observe what makes other Notion pages and really just websites in general visually appealing and then apply those techniques to your workspaces. And then you want to build around your objective. So articulate the purpose of each page and then craft your content around that purpose. Exclude content that fails to support it and give visual priority to the most objective, critical information. 
And importantly, you want to create visual hierarchies. So using Notion's various blocks and styling options, diversify the size and color of your content to guide the viewer's eye and emphasize the most important elements. And you can strategically combine headings, quotes, bolds and italics, colored text, highlighted text, grayed text, and multimedia captions to achieve this visual hierarchy. And in general, you really should try to diversify your blogs. In addition to establishing hierarchy, mixed formatting will make your content more visually interesting. So try to vary the types of blocks on each page and use them in creative ways. For example, quotes can really be headings and callouts can become buttons when you arrange them in columns. And you also want to be sure to utilize toggles. They'll help you to avoid overwhelmingly long pages. You can fold each section of your content into a toggle. And you want to be sure to segment your content. So white space or negative space is a fundamental principle of all good design. So place empty blocks between sections and allow adjacent columns to differ in height, such as headings placed to the side rather than above their corresponding paragraphs. And also be sure to use divider blocks between sections and sometimes beneath headings. And then you want to hone in on a particular color palette. So Notion's limited color choices support its nice balance of simplicity and functionality, but using that full spectrum will really create a circus of your workspace. So try to choose just two or three and specify where each will be used. So use consistent coloring for headings, links, callouts, and other recurring elements. And then try to choose a particular icon set. So a, a page's icon displays in many places. When the page is open, you see it above the title, but the icon also appears when the page is referenced in the sidebar, in other pages, and in most database views. So committing to a single icon collection will really give your workspace a polished, professional look. And you can search just free icons in Google to find a variety of options to suit your particular preference. But some of the most popular ones I'll link to within the video description and you can implement them really easily using my tool Notion icons on Notion VIP. And then lastly, you want to optimize for all screen sizes. So you and any other users of your workspace are likely to access your workspace throughout the day. So that'll be from the office, at home, and on the go. And that requires optimization for all screens, including external monitors, laptops, tablets, and mobile devices. So columns will enhance the user experience on larger screens, but keep in mind how those smaller screens are going to affect columns. They're going to contract and they're going to collapse. So be sure to test your workspace across all of these devices before final implementation. And the eighth and final strategy is to engage the community. So Notion users convene across online platforms to showcase their workspaces, exchange resources, and collaboratively resolve challenges. And these communities really help guide my methodologies and reveal tricks I'd never discover on my own. So as you encounter obstacles along your Notion journey, you'll find eager supporters in the Notion Made Simple Facebook group and in the Notion subreddit, which are among the most active of these communities. And within these communities, you'll find some authoritative users who regularly publish videos, newsletters, templates, and other helpful content. And like me, many of them have built their businesses around Notion. So the best place to find these experts is in Notion's official directory of certified consultants, which I'll link to in the video description. And within each profile, you'll find links to Twitter, YouTube, and the consultant's website. And then lastly, consider becoming a Notion ambassador. It's a community of energetic Notion enthusiasts who are part of a Slack group where they are having daily conversations about the latest trends in Notion. And you'll also gain access to new features in Notion before they're released publicly. So that concludes our roundup of eight strategies for building a powerful Notion workspace. And as you implement these and other strategies, be sure to participate in those online conversations. And you can find me on Twitter at William Nutt, where I'll be happy to guide you through 
any obstacles you encounter along your Notion journey.